it a warm uh, afternoon and a warm welcome to all of you. As others are joining us, we will be proceeding with the PowerPoint presentation. I promise that I will not spend more than one hour, 15, 20 minutes. I'm trying to keep it within one hour. But in having said that, it is also important that I am able to portray or bring to you or bring to your attention what the TOA MX6224D Mosque Amplifier can do. Thank you very much. So what I'm presenting this afternoon is a digital mixer amplifier. The name is, or the model number is MX-26224D. All right, so we'll go into it in detail. What are we are going also to be discussing today are these features that I have, I have on the table of contents. We are going to discuss at what is a typical audio system for a mosque. This details what such a system must do. We will talk about the inputs that that system must handle or must provide, the effects that that kind of a system must provide, the output zones or areas and how these are controlled or operated. We will also talk about the concept, which is the idea behind the design of the MX6224D uh, MOSC amplifier. We'll talk about the appearance, key features that you find on the MX6224D, how the amplifier looks at the front as well as the back. We'll talk about the remote controller, which is a nice addition, nice feature with the MX6224D, uh, which replaces the old school wall switch boxes, which I'll show you in the coming pages or uh, uh, pages. We'll talk about the specifications and we'll talk about unique features that comes with the MX6224D. So as I'm presenting, if there's any questions, queries, there's a Q&A. I would want you to just post that question or a query in the Q&A. Uh, my panelists will be able to address it. Similarly, I'll also uh, address it later on. Thank you. So there is two pages that I've put on the web on the webinar. Uh, this just is a glossary or is an explanation of the Islamic terms uh, that are used in the presentation. For some of us who are not Muslim, but we might be working at a mosque, we might be installing sound at a mosque, we might be designing a mosque, we might be commissioning a sound at a mosque. It would be nice to know and familiarize yourself with these words. Okay, so what we have on this page, we have a common word that we'll find elsewhere in this PowerPoint presentation, which is the minaret or a, min or a tower or a minarets if there are more, or towers, basically, these are key features of any mosque. You do find them on almost any mosque. They serve two multiple purposes. Number one, they provide a visual focal point as a way of identifying a location and area where a mosque is. So if you see a minaret, you are bound to know, okay, in that direction, there is a mosque. And number two, quite importantly, they are used to do the azan. And Azan is a Muslim call to prayer. All right, so the minaret saves two key purposes. One as a focal or as a visual focal point. And number two, quite critically, this is where the Azan or the Adan is executed when a Muslim, it is a Muslim call for prayer is being done. You will find a word called Imam. And Imam, as you see on the pictorial representation, is just a leadership position within the Islamic religion, most commonly used as the title of a worship leader for a mosque and Muslim community. All right, that's an imam. Then you have the kutbah. The kutbah is just a pulpit address or sermon. And this could be based on any topic. And usually it is conducted from the minbar. Then you have what is called a minbar. All right, so and as you see on the pictorial presentation, you will see it's just a pulpit from where the sermon or kutbah is delivered. In its simplest form, the minbar is a platform with some steps. As you can see, it's just a platform built with some steps and normally there is something that closes here, either a door or a curtain of some sort. 
where the imam sits and then he does the kutba. And then we have what we call the mirab, which is a very critical key feature of a mosque architecture. So a mirab is just basically a niche. It's a niche in the wall that indicates the direction of Mecca towards which all Muslims pray. And Mecca is in the, in the so, and Mecca is the city in which the prophet Muhammad was born and the home of the most important Islamic site, the Kaaba. Then we will see a word in my presentation called Salah or Salat. It's just an Aramic word, Islamic word that means Salah or prayer. So it just means prayer, right? I'm hoping that everyone can still hear me and see my PowerPoint clearly. And I'm hoping, I can't check, but I'm hoping that those that are watching us live on YouTube on our Toa Africa channel, you are also seeing and hear, hearing me quite clearly. So here's something that we want to discuss and execute in this presentation. The typical audio system for mosque, what is it that it must do? What must it deliver? What must it do? So in a typical audio system for a mosque, we are looking at these key areas that this particular system must be able to address and execute. Number one, it must be able to cater for the inputs, be they microphones for the mean bar or microphones for the mirror, or being any audio signal of any sort, being from a CD player, maybe from a cell phone connected to the auxiliaries, this amplifier should be able to process through these signals through the mixing part with an effector on and off, be able to route that mixed signal or that, um, that mixed signal to the amplifier side and then output it either to the minaret, which is the tower, to the hall where prayers are mainly conducted to the ladies room, which is dedicated for the ladies or to the out, outdoor area. So a typical audio system for a mosque must be able to provide inputs, must be able to broadcast sound, number one, to the hall, where the men gather for the salah or for the khutbah, as well as for the outside areas, which at times might also be used for the khutbah as well as for the salah, as well as during the, the prayers, the prayer calling to the azan, to the minaret, by the azan for the minaret. So the typical audio system must be able to satisfy these inputs, route them to the outputs that are the zones for the mosque. All right, I see a number of people are still joining us. It is good to note that uh, you are joining us. Please, you are more than welcome. I also see there's a, something on the chat. I'm hoping my panelists are also assisting us. I will maybe after three, four slides, I will just quickly go through the chat and see just in case somebody is experiencing difficulties with the webinar. So the three, there are three key important broadcasts for the mosque. Very important one, three. Number one is the azan. This is the azan or the ada. It is, it is the call to worship that any typical mosque audio system must be able to execute azan. Number two, it is the salah or the salat. This is the prayer, the actual prayer. And thirdly, the last key important broadcast is the kutbah or the sermon. So any typical audio system designed, installed, for a mosque must be able to satisfy these three key primary broadcasts for any mosque. Let's have a look at the azan, which is the call to worship. All right. In the azan or when the azan is being done or being performed, mostly it's just one microphone that is being used via the mixer. And then the effects can be switched on and off. This normally goes or routed to the, to the amplifier, out to the speaker. So the azan is usually broadcast, like I've said, through the horn speakers that are usually mounted on the minaret. And on the minaret, you normally have four horn speakers. There could be more, but minimum, you normally have four horn speakers, each facing the north, the south, the east, the west, to give a 360 degree uh, area of broadcast from the minaret. So when the azan is being done, mostly the primary, this primary broadcast is being routed to the horn speakers on the tower or on the minaret. 
This is the first broadcast. The second broadcast that this typical audio system must do is the salat or the salah, which is the prayer. When this is being conducted, usually it, not, it does not go through to the minaret, to the horn speakers. It is normally routed by the amplifier, by the mixer through the amplifiers to number one, quite critical, the hall where the men gather for their prayer to the ladies' area, as well as sometimes to the spillover or the outside area if the main hall is filled up. Right. For those that haven't had the opportunity of um, hearing this, let me just go quickly for a brief few seconds. Let me go back to the slide before this one, which is the azan. I'll just play a few seconds of a typical azan. So this is a typical azan that I've got as a as an audio clip that we had. It might have come to you softer, but um, this is a typical azan. For those that have never heard of it, this is what an azan sounds like, and this is normally broadcast through the horn speakers. And the salah, this is a typical video clip of a salah that's being conducted. But I'll just play a few a few seconds, and then I I carry on with the presentation. Right, that's a typical key second broadcast that's very important, the Salah. Let me go to the next PowerPoint. And this is the Kutba, which normally when it's bring broadcast, it's normally done from the minbar, usually two microphones that are on and the Imam is using those. And normally when the Kutba or a sermon is being conducted in a mosque, this is primarily directed at the main, at the hall, sometimes the ladies area, as well as to the outdoor area. And this is a typical sermon or a typical kutbah. Let me just play a few seconds of this video clip. This is a typical kutbah, which is a sermon that is normally conducted from the minbar. So having gone through these few PowerPoints with you, just to give a briefing to those that might be working or designing a mosque, uh, a mosque sound and who don't know the word or the terminology, I've just given you these highlights. Now let's go straight into the old school, the way most systems are set up. I think we have all, most of us who do mosque sound, we've come across such nightmares before. This is a typical audio system for a mosque. I like, I like to call it old school type. All right. The reason why I want to call it old school type, that is, a, this is because now after this, I'm going to be introducing the TOA MX6224D digital two channel, 480 watt, 240 watts per channel, specifically uh, designed for mosque application, which is our new amplifier. So, the old school system looked pretty much like what you see on this pictorial presentation. Number one, you might see it doesn't look very appeasing, looks very complicated, doesn't look too tidy, doesn't give the operator confidence if he hasn't been trained on the system. What this, all these sliders do also looks quite intimidating. You might have a mixing desk, you might have a graphic equalizer, you might have an effect, uh, and it looks intimidating when you look at all these little dials, little controls. So the old school way has been replaced by the TOA MX6224D 6224 MOSC amplifier. This is what I'm trying to bring across to our attention. Some of the research that was done uh, as feedback and as research by TOA, 
That then led TOA to develop and release the MX6224D. These are some of the opinions or the inputs from the end users. They had a feeling that the old school way of doing things like these old amplifiers that you see was very complicated. The system led good sound quality. The operators didn't know if whatever setting was on the amplifier for them, if they wanted to make an adjustment, they didn't know, is this the right setting? If I turn this knob, is it the right thing to do? And many of them had only operated some switch boxes like, like we, what, what you see on my PowerPoint. It would be made switch on, on and off the minaret sound, switch on and off the main hall sound, switch on and off the outside area sound. So it also had a messy appearance. Didn't look appetizing at all. You look at it, it gets confusing. And some of the opinions that led to TOA developing the MX6224D were very complicated system. The old school was complicated. As you can see, most of us who are on this webinar today, I don't know if you are comfortable with mixing desks, they are complicated. You all have these little knobs and controls and buttons and switches. And most of the guys who operate them have never been properly trained on these. So they don't know what they are doing at the end of the day. They think they are doing the best sometimes they are mixing it up wrongly. And usually I believe in the word garbage in, garbage out, which means you might have the best equipment, but if you don't do it rightly at the beginning, your audio output is not, is not gonna do justice to you. So it was very complicated. Most people didn't know how to use it properly. They also didn't know if the current setting that are left here, as you see on these knobs, as an example, they didn't know if it was right or, or, or not. Or, and also a few had used only, sorry, and also a few had used few feathers only. Look at this. This could be a mixing, mixing desk with 10 channels. And whoever is operating probably only uses two and three. He's scared of touching anything else because they don't know about it. And also because this system include the old school had a mixer, had a maybe an effector, had a graphic equalizer, also had an amplifier for the outside, amplifier for the inside. It ended up becoming very extensive. So these are the issues that then led to TOA developing the MX6224D MOSC amplifier. Lastly, and as part of the inputs that led us to developing the MX6224D are these. Those that had one speakers mounted on the minaret, they often came across diaphragms being occasionally damaged here and then, and they had to be changed from time to time. Okay, this obviously nobody wants to do. It's, 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 ex, it's extremely expensive. You have to have guys to go up the minaret, remove the horn speakers, clean them up, change the diaphragm, replace them and charge you. So most people were not happy with that diaphragms were getting damaged as well as the sound was not very clear. Right. One of the reasons why the sound was not clear besides um, the old school type of mixing equalization was because most of these old school systems, they use class A amplifiers, class B amplifiers, class AB amplifiers. From our electronics background, we know that class A amplifiers do offer very, very, very crappy efficiency of around 30%. And class B amplifiers, normally they tell you efficiency is around 78.5%, but practical values are very much less and there's heavy distortions. And then we had class AB amplifiers that offered you around about 60% of efficiency and the, and, the rest, and the rest of the 40% was dumped into the heat sinks as excess heat. So class A, B, they were offering around 60% of efficiency and the other 40% of efficiency to make it 100% efficient was being dumped as excess heat as the amplifiers were operating. So these were all undesirable. So this brings us to the TOA MX6224D the MOSC amplifier designed specifically for medium and small sized MOSCs. What are they offering? We are offering you new class D series amplification, right? A class D amplifier has theoretical, theoretical values 
of power efficiency of around 100%. But in real life, we're talking of efficiencies of around 85%, more realistically to around 88%. Though, of course, it is very easy to reach about 90% or so of efficiency. So class D amplifiers do offer you a very good efficiency as compared to any other classes. Plus, they offer you a lot more. Let me read what I've written here in blue. Class D amplifiers that are installed or that are built into the MX6224D, they come also with, the MX6224D comes also with DSP, which is your digital signal processing. It comes with mic equalization. It comes with speaker equalization, which is a bonus, both for us in technical and for those in sales. Speaker equalization, you will notice in the following PowerPoint presentation what it does. So the system has better and more advantages offering a high degree of protection of, speaker, of speakers, that is when the speaker equalization is active, as well as a high efficiency, especially on consumption of power, because we use what we call switched mode power supplies, as well as give you ultimately a very clear sound, which is a bonus. The concept behind the MX6224D cannot be justified if we don't do a comparison between the old school conventional system and the new MX6224D digital system. What is it that we have gathered from previously users of the conventional system, right? They end users, they wanted a system that is less complicated. They also felt that their most sound was not of good quality or is still not of good quality to those that are still using the old school as type of uh, MOSC sound. They didn't know if it is the right setting that would be set on the mixers or on the graphic equalizers. Most have no further experience except maybe using a few feathers or a switch boxes only. And most often, most of them were frustrated with clustered messy uh, setups that they, they were coming across with the old school. So as TOA, we then take the, took the leap and came up with a solution to, as an answer to all these frustrations and feedback from our end users. This is what we came up with. We came up with a digital class D amplifier dual channel, 240 watts per channel, which gives us 480 watts of power. It is easy to use. So it gives you easiness when it comes to simple design concept or a design, easy to install, easy to set up as well as easy to operate. The MX6224D, because it's a class D digital amplifier with DSP, it offers you quality sound, very crystal clear, intelligible sound and less signal to noise or less noise. Also, it offers you, which is a big point for us, both technical and sales, it offers us protection of speakers because it has been, it comes now with equalization, speaker equalization for the outside areas as well as for the inside areas, sorry. So it offers you safety uh, on your speakers and quite importantly, offers you or offers us less feedback. Whenever we're setting up sound, be it for a mosque, be it for any house of worship, we normally have complications with feedback. So the MX6224D offers you less feedback. We'll come to it how we can, how it does that. On these ones, let me take you through the next few pages, about two pages, on optimized features that TOA came up when they were putting together the MX6224D. Number one, let's talk about the microphones. At the moment, it is optimized to work with EM410, which is a tower lavalier hardwired condenser microphone that requires phantom power of 24 volts, which is available by merely switching it on and off for input number one or for input number two to six. I will show you later on. And also, we have a wide range of TOA wireless microphones that can be used uh, with the MX6224D 
And optimally, it is also designed, it has also been designed to give you, uh, I mean, to work very well with the TOA handheld dynamic microphone, which is a DM1300 that is designed for both speech as well as for vocal use. Inside the amplifier itself, it comes with a 240 watt times two digital plus D amplifiers. It gives you independent input and output volume controls. It offers you turn controls. This is where we deal with the low frequencies that normally affect us and, and, and give us feedback. So it has tone controls for your low, middle, and high frequencies for your input number one to number six. Awesome. Let's talk about other optimized features of the MX. It comes with speaker equalization presets. 12 of them are available. I will show you later on how to do these 12 pre uh, presets. So we do have speaker equalization, sorry, speaker equalizer presets. These have been optimized for the TOA BS1030 uh, speakers as well as for the TC631M which is our TOA 30 watt 100 volt one, one speaker, as well as the TC6651M, which is our 50 watt TOA 100 volt line one speaker. The MX comes optimized with DSP, digital signal processing, processing multi-effect, all right? There are four types that you can do. Number one, you can do a dome, a hole, a plate, and a delay. And of these four effects, you have three selectables. You can select long reverbs, medium reverbs, and short reverbs. So if you multiply three times, uh, times four dome effects, whole effects times three, plate effects times three, delay effects times three, this is where you, came, you come up now with those 12 effects that I was talking about. Another key feature that is handy and good that I like very much is the RC. 03 remote control that we have designed that works very well with the MX6224 D. This offers you a replacement of the switch boxes that I'm going to show you in the coming up presentation. Optionally, it can be desktop mounted or you can also rack mount it in a standard 19 inch wide equipment rack and it only occupies two U rack space. If you are going to rack mount it uh, for sales and for technical, you need to remember that you need to buy the MB25B rack mounting bracket. Let's talk about the three things that I mentioned, which forms part of the development concept for the MX6224D from TOA. We mentioned easy. Easy is we, were tr we came up with this design particularly to offer easy of installation for the installer, easy of setup for the person who's setting up the equipment and ease of in operation for the end user. So you don't want the old school where it's complicated where the end user doesn't know what, what to do. If he wants to adjust something, he's too scared to touch anything because he doesn't know the right setting. This now is easier with the MX6224 d as well as the easiness of being able to switch on and off the room sound broadcast the outside minaret sound broadcast by merely losing using the press, sorry, by merely lose, using the RC03, you can press on and off the room button, sound goes to the room, on and off outside button, sound goes to the minaret or to the outside room. As well, you can switch on and off the effects of the MX6224 d So it's quite very, very, very easy to use. And quality, now we come into the quality. How we achieve clarity of sound with the MX6224D is quite simple. We are using class D digital amplifiers. We have a built-in DSP module that offers you two channels of DSP to each channel of your, of your output. And this then offers you digital high quality sound broadcast from the MX6224D to your outside area as well as to your room area, which is the minaret as well as the hall, the outside area or the ladies room. Let's talk about the safety that we wanted to achieve. We, also, we have also managed to achieve safety of our speakers by incorporating the speaker equalization function for A, the outside area, B, the inside area. 
So the outside area can switch on the effects. The effects here has been primarily designed to work very well with the TOA TC 631M and 651M horn speakers. Therefore, it means when your speaker equalization is on for the outside and for the inside, and you are using these TOA speakers, as you see on my PowerPoint, you will be able to achieve long lasting uh, diaphragms with your speaker that don't get easily damaged. They can give you a long service without having you to bother to get somebody to go up the minute and change them like the old school. And it gives, they will give you very clear, well-defined, crisp, crisp sound. As well as for the inside, you will also have clear sound and you will also have less feedback issues. So let's talk about what, what has been combined into the MX6224D. Number one, two in one plus three. What we are saying is instead of having two by 240 watt amplifiers, we have built them inside one unit. So instead of having two, two use units or amplifiers, they are now incorporated in one two U amplifier plus an additional built in digital effector plus an additional built in speaker, speaker equalizer plus an additional built in remote control interface. This is all contained in a two U height space in your standard equipment uh, rack. Let's talk about the all in one plus two. So the all in one, we are saying from the old school, you would need a mixing desk. From the old school, you would need an effector. You would need a graphic equalizer. From the old school, you need a separate amplifier for your outside area. You need a separate amplifier for your inside area. This has all been incorporated in a standard 2U unit that offers you extra speaker equalization as well as remote control. Now I'm going to talk about the remote control in my next slide. I'm hoping that if there are questions, I will pop in into the questions now and have a look what's going on. So what we have done as TOA, when we were doing the concept and the, and the research to come up with this most amplifier, we knew our customers, sometimes they were using these customized switch boxes to switch on and off the area that they want the sound to go through that it didn't look nice, it looked cumbersome, it looked messy, it didn't look well. So what we have done, we have replaced the old school type of customized switch boxes with a clean, nice uh, remote control interface called RC03. What it does, you'll be able to switch on and off your rooms, which is your room and your outside area, you'll be able to switch on and off your effect. And also there's an LED button that tells you when your RC is terminated properly or correctly to the MX6224D. So if the cable that is connecting this RC to the MX is broken, it means the LED will go off. So you will need to sort it out. Otherwise the remote panel will not work. So it, is, it gives you an indication that the remote panels is okay. And you can control the sound going to the room or the sound going outside as well as switch on and off the effects. So this replaces what you see on my slide as these customized switch boxes. Now let's, took, let's take a look at the comparison or where the MX6224 becomes favorable to the end user. Critical for the sales, as well as for us in technical, and as well as you as the end user, is to know that with the MX6224D, it only consumes 97.7 watts. If I was going to create a system, TOA system in this example, which is an A1724, which is 240 watts times one, plus an additional 240 watts to then give me the two channel equivalents of this MX6224D. These two amplifiers will consume about 458 watts of power, which means if I am to replace these two amplifiers with a single MX6224D, I'll be able to save 78.7% .7 
of power consumption that me as the end user, I'll be so happy with it because my power bill at the end of the day will be so much reduced. So there is a lot of power saving, saving with plus D digital amplification and switch mode power supplies, right? On weight wise, it weighs just 6.1 kg, a similar system in TOA with the 1724 and the P224 will weigh around about 26.7 kg, which brings us to about 77.2 weight saving uh, reduction on the MX. And lastly, for those who are going to stock these in volume, all right, for your logistics, for your warehouse space saving, you will be able to save on your space as this one MX 6224D just occupies as uh, 0 0.0120 cubic meters of space compared to the same two packages of amplifier that will, uh, that will consume 0 0.241 cubic meters of space, which gives you a 50.1 equivalent on savings if you are going to use these two amplifiers. Right, let's look at the appearance. Let's look at the appearance. Before I look to the, at the appearance, allow me to just go into the charts so that I can have a look at uh, what is going on. Uh, thank you very much. I can see there's confirmation that the sound and video are clear. Thank you, Vala Jala, for Vali Jala for confirming. I can see uh, my one of my panelists. Thank you, Steve, for confirming that YouTube is working well. Uh, there was okay. Uh, Stephen does mention that there were sound clips were very soft. That's because thank you very much. I've noted that one. Thank you so much. Um, so let's take a look at the appearance of the MX 6224D. The front, how does it look? All right. So on the front of the MX 6224, you have the following features that I like very simple, very laid out uh, in, in nice spaces, easy to operate, easy to visualize easy to interact with. You have on the front, a volume control for your, for, for, for your channel input number one or for input number one, a volume control for two, three, four, a volume control for input five and six. You do have a global mic one to six EQ settings where you do set your low frequencies, your mid frequencies, your high frequencies to counter the effect of feedback that might come into the system. You do have mic one to six volume effects. You can increase the effects volume that you have chosen. You have four presets. There's a slide coming up with those presets. So for now you have four presets and of each preset you can set to long reverb time, medium reverb time or a short reverberation time or a switch off. So you have three reverb time settings Pay each preset. This is where you come up with 12 presets. What I also like here, microphone input number five and number six. These are designed to be dedicated to the mean bar when the imam is conducting a kutba. In this way, there is now an effect on and off switch where if you don't want those two microphones in the mean bar to have effects on, you can simply switch them off. And also you have two auxiliary inputs, volume control. Auxiliary number one is RCA, which you will see in the next slide. It is at the back of the amplifier. It's an RCA unbalanced input. Auxiliary input number two is a 3.5 mil jack, uh, 3.5 millimeter socket that sits in front that is controlled by aux number two. We have got two outside, sorry, two main volume controls. Number one for the outside area and number two for the room or inside area. For the outside area, you have your effects on and off. If you want to have effects on the own speakers at the minaret, you can also switch your equalizer, speaker equalization on and off. This brings us to that safety point where if the equalizer is on, then you have safety on your speakers. And you also have the speaker equalizer on and off for the room and the volume on. On the area control, you do have a three LED, uh, three LEDs 
one that shows you a minus 20 dB signal, the other one is zero dB signal, and the red one that shows you basically that you are overdriving or clipping your amplifier, you need to adjust your volume controls. Awesome. Let's have a look at the rear of the units. For the technical and sales, 